This is ABC 15 Mornings. A crucial holiday season for retailers. When you have shortages, then you have higher prices. Will the country be able to keep up with demand? Booster shots and vaccines for kids. Pediatricians are great at ma managing vaccinations and we hope that our pediatricians will be ready. New details on what we could see over the next few months. It's been decades since the old Pueblo last saw a Hollywood production. We'll help attract a lot more clientele that will help us out and other local businesses as well. But this morning, Hollywood returns to Tucson. All their wins in these playoffs. Tarasi, a deep one, and a chance for four. What a game. The Mercury win in overtime as we get ready for game three tomorrow night. And it was a nail biter all the way through OT as oh. well. It's great support out there. So yeah. many of you with the X Factor getting in on it. It was awesome. It was so much fun. And then now we have a whole day of hype before the <laughs> next game tomorrow. We're excited for that and excited you're waking up with us. Good morning, everyone. I'm Allison Rodriguez in for Nick Saletti today. And I'm Kaylee O'Kelly. We do want to talk about what's going on with that weather. There's a chill in the air. I was thinking jacket, but it might be coat weather. I know, <laughs> but I'm just going to go there. We're so acclimated to warm conditions. It's true. Well, this is the time of year a lot of people are like ah, not a fan of because yes they love the cold but then it gets warm in the afternoon mm -hmm. so it's kind of like what do you wear what do you not wear and that's going to be the forecast today and for a while too because this morning temperatures are in the 50s here in the valley <laughs> officially 55 at sky harbor the two points low and dry in the 30s and winds from the east at seven and across the valley temperatures as chilly as 47 there in wickenburg and levine 49 there just south of south mountain in Awatuki, and 45 in chandler one of the cooler spots i'm seeing right now and 48 for you folks out in the far east valley and santan valley and a few 50s elsewhere from mesa to Tempe and Scottsdale. The planner for the rest of your morning and afternoon showing temperatures climbing from the 50s at 8 o'clock this morning to the 70s at noon and topping out close to 80 degrees. So today, sunny and warmer conditions in the forecast and the warming trend continues for the rest of the week and into the weekend. And we'll talk about when we'll hit the 90s again coming up in a few minutes. But first, a check of traffic with Justin Bezerra, who's in for Megan Thompson. Good morning, Justin. Yeah, good morning, Jorge. Let's get a check on your uh, desert drive times this morning. One of the trouble spots, I-10, as we take a look at our maps right now, we do have a crash. This is at 7th Street. It is uh, blocking one of the lanes there. It's not really causing too much of a problem, but you can see some of the delays here as we make our trip down I-10. It's green right now, but just a few seconds ago it was actually uh, in the yellow. So we're starting to see some of our uh, morning commutes, you know, our typical trouble spots start to build. Basically, if you're taking that uh, drive in on I-10, it's going to be slow go. This is a live look at 59th Avenue right now. You can see some of that traffic starting to build. A really quick check of your desert drive times. You can see I-10 that time starting to build. It's in the yellow, so if you're coming in from the far west valley into Phoenix, you're going to be tapping those brakes. The I-17 looking pretty good along with the 51. We are monitoring breaking news of a murder in Guadalupe. Authorities telling us a man was shot and killed just after one o'clock this morning. That man died at the scene, and at this point there is no suspect information, so we are asking for more information on that. We're going to pass that along to you as soon as we get those answers. We also want to tell you about a man in the hospital with serious injuries this morning. This is from a stabbing in Phoenix. It happened in a parking lot near 16th Street and Indian School. Police telling us they are speaking with witnesses and they have not given any details on a suspect in this case either yet. In the West Valley roads are back open in Glendale. Police had Grand Avenue blocked while they were investigating someone who had been hit by a train. Our Cliff Castle Chopper, you can see flying over that scene near 59th Avenue. BNSF telling us one of their trains was headed to Phoenix from New Mexico when that person was hit. Person, they say, not in a designated crossing. And we're told the man does have critical injuries. The biggest story really across the nation today, the FDA meeting on COVID-19 vaccines, specifically the booster shots we've talked so much about, and whether you can mix and match vaccines. So our Jamie Warren following this for us now. She joins us live here. Jamie, what is first on the agenda? So Allison and Kaylee, today the FDA is scheduled to vote on whether or not they would recommend the booster shot for the Moderna vaccine. Now this would be for certain groups at least six months after you receive your second dose. Now they're also expected to vote on the same thing for the Johnson and Johnson vaccine tomorrow. And the company wants the FDA to decide who gets it and when if approved. If both boosters get yes votes, the FDA will still need to formally approve the emergency use authorization. However, just because the FDA 
could approve it doesn't mean it'll happen quickly. The CDC will then need to make that decision. Well, Jamie, we know, again, there is one more thing on the agenda. We mentioned it right off the top here. It all has to do with mixing and matching vaccines when it comes to these boosters. Right, so this has been a real hot topic. You know, if I got the Pfizer vaccine, could I then uh, get the Moderna booster shot? Or if I got Moderna, then could I get the Johnson & Johnson uh, booster shot? Now, uh, right now, this is not actually on the agenda to be voted on, but it will definitely uh, be discussed. And researchers, they've actually done a lot of research on this. Here's what they had to say. Most important takeaways are two things. One is that all of these different nine combinations are safe, as in there are no new or different side effects. So all of these appear to be safe. And then the second big takeaway is that all of these combinations induced a pretty strong, robust antibody response. So again, a vote on mixing and matching not expected to happen at this meeting, but it will definitely be discussed. In the meantime, uh, we could have an answer by the end of today on whether or not uh, the FDA is a recommending booster shots for the Moderna vaccine and then same thing for the J&J &J tomorrow. Also, pediatric vaccines, that is a real hot topic as well, and that is expected to be discussed at a meeting on October 26th. For now, reporting live, Jamie Warren, ABC 15, Arizona. Yeah, so many parents waiting with bated breath on that one. Our Jamie Warren live. There's some new analysis to tell you about this morning as well. It shows COVID-19 as the leading cause of death among people between the ages of 35 to 54 in September. Now, the Kaiser Family Foundation took a closer look at deaths from June to September, and officials believe 90,000 deaths could have been prevented with vaccines. More than half of those deaths happening last month. The city of Phoenix adding some new incentives for those getting vaccinated. How about free groceries or gas? Anyone fully vaccinated at one of the mobile vans set up will get a $100 gift card and a van will be set up at Fountain Square Shopping Mall this afternoon. That's right there near 7th Street and Belt. A special procession for Sergeant Michael Rudd with the La Paz County Sheriff's Office. You may recall he was hit and killed by a semi while, while responding to a pursuit on the I-10. Law enforcement agencies from all over the state coming to help escort Sergeant Rudd's body back from California, including those who worked with him day in and day out. He's taught me a lot. He uh, pretty much took me under his wing from day one of deputy and ran with it one of those lifetime individuals that you'll meet that will leave a mark in your heart sergeant rudd's family also participating in the procession they say he was always a public servant serving in the army and air force before his career in law enforcement and happening this morning a car wash fundraiser for the family of mcso deputy juan ruiz he also died in the line of duty earlier this week this is happening at the cobblestone auto spa out in goodyear we're going to get a live report for you coming up in our next half hour well from the gas station to the grocery store we are all paying more for all kinds of things. The Labor Department says U.S. producers are charging roughly 8% more than they were at the same time last year. And those costs, of course, are being passed down to all of us. Products not available on the retail store on time. And the raw material that's coming in is actually coming in late or coming in less and coming in expensive. Experts say it's all because of the supply chain issues and worker shortages. West Coast ports will start around the clock service finally to get cargo ships unloaded, but there still remains a shortage of truck drivers to move all of this stuff across the country. Garassi off the double, Eddie into the game for Cunningham. Griner gets free and throws it down. History made as that what you just saw was the first dunk ever in the yes. WNBA finals. Those were two of 29 points thrown down by Brittany Griner. I mean, this is incredible. Games really don't get much more exciting than we saw last night there at the Footprint Center downtown. The Mercury winning in overtime. I mean, a nail biter all the way to the end, 91-86. The finals continue. They're now tied up at one game each. Game three happens tomorrow night in Chicago. All right, hoping, we believe. Yes, we believe. We're holding on. How amazing would that be? Our Suns get into happen. the finals. Mercury now in the finals. We're going to bring Cardinals home that in the championship. Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> She's
calling it now. All right, changing the rules. Next on ABC 15 Mornings, Facebook with some new policies to better protect users from online bullying and harassment. Plus, when the weather gets bad, rely on yourself. There's some new information taking a closer look at safety systems in most new cars that you are paying more for. Like a little wild child, I love to be outdoors and play with animals. Plus, we continue our celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month and a woman making history when it comes to the outdoors. And here's a live look right now. This is the I-17 at the I-10 stack. You can see traffic starting to build right there. We're going to take, take a look at your desert drive times coming up. In your Thursday morning headlines, former advisor to President Donald Trump, Steve Bannon, is scheduled for a deposition as the House Committee continues to investigate the January 6th insurrection at the Capitol. Lawmakers are not expecting him to appear. Strong winds, they are fueling this California wildfire, forcing more evacuations and power outages. The flames spreading through more than 15,000 acres of Santa Barbara County. And we can tell you at least four buildings are now destroyed. Facebook changing its harassment policy to give more protection to people in the public eye. Any content that's degrading or sexualizes public figures like celebrities is now prohibited and the rule has already did apply to private individuals. And EA Sports is removing the now former head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders, John Gruden from Madden NFL 22. That decision coming in the wake of those offensive emails from Gruden that were recently made public. A new warning for drivers this morning. AAA is telling people not to over rely on your advanced safety features in cars during severe weather. New research is finding heavy rain affects the security, the safety systems from functioning properly. In one experiment, cars with automatic emergency braking collided with a stopped vehicle a third of the time. And in a rain simulation, AAA found cars with lane assistance did not stay in the lanes about 70% of the time. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time, sponsored by Accident Law Group. Time right now is 614. Good morning, I'm Justin Pazera. Megan Thompson has the morning off. This is a live look right now from the ABC 15 Live Drive. They are making their way down the Loop 202 Red Mountain. They're near Alma School right now. You can see blue skies, the sun's starting to come up. Let's take a look at your maps right now as we can uh, take, a, uh, take a look and see that things are starting to build. This is I-10 right now. There's a crash. This is eastbound. This is at 7th Street. Thankfully, it's not affecting much of the traffic right now. You can see just a little bit of yellow here right by uh, that area. I-17, it's green right now, but we have been seeing that uh, start to build as we move on through the rush hour. This is the I-17 at the I-10 stack in the last couple of seconds. That kind of cleared up right there, but it has been kind to touch and go all morning long. Taking a look at your desert drive times, only 24 minutes. That's a slight improvement from a few minutes ago. If you need to get from the far West Valley into Phoenix, it'll take you about 24 minutes. The 17 looking pretty good right now. Only 11 minutes to get down the 17 from the Loop 101. And then the 51, it is pretty much wide open from the Loop 101 to the mini stack. Just 13 minutes. Jorge Torres is here with a check on your forecast. If you're headed into work this morning, you might want to turn on the what? Heats, the, the yeah. heat in the seats, the warmer seats. Yeah, because it's quite chilly out there still this morning in the 50s here in the valley. A few spots uh, in the 40s, places like Wickenburg, for example, and even in areas around Mesa and Tempe. But other than that, not really much to talk about as far as storm activity. Most of it's staying well to our north and northeast. In fact, significant flooding in areas around central Texas. But for us here in Arizona and across the west, fairly quiet on this Thursday with temperatures in the 20s. Still very cold up in Flagstaff, along with Heber and Shola, mid 30s there. 39 in Graham County, 49 there in Gila County. For you folks in Globe, good morning there. Now at 616 and to the west, temperatures in the 40s and 50s from Yuma all the way to Lake Havasu and Bullhead City too. Your forecast here in Phoenix calling for highs to warm up to 79 degrees, which is warmer than the past couple of days, but still well below average. We should be around 90 degrees this time of year, and that will not be the case today. How about tonight? Well, lows did 
dip down generally in the mid 50s. Once again, kind of like this morning and it's still below average. We should be in the mid 60s for overnight lows. That will not be the case until potentially next week. How about elsewhere across Arizona today in Flagstaff? We'll call it cool once again with a high of 54 in Sedona in the upper 60s once again and in Prescott, a beautiful day there in Yavapai County. We'll call it mild with a high of 62 with sunny skies as well. Elsewhere across our beautiful state up at the Grand Canyon, 53 degrees this afternoon, 68 in Kingman, Lake Havasu, 82, one of the warmer spots in Yuma, one of the hot spots, we'll call it anyway, with a high of 84 and 70s across southern and southwestern Arizona. The weekend forecast calling for temperatures to bounce back into the 90s here in the valley with sunny skies and some breezes at times. Winds from the east to 5 to 15, gusting around 20 to 25. On Sunday, a little more cloud cover, and that will nudge our temperatures a couple of degrees, but we're going to stay in the upper 80s, low 90s throughout the weekend. So here's that 7 day forecast in Phoenix. We go from the 70s today to the 80s tomorrow and into the 90s on Saturday, then back in the 80s for Sunday and early next week with lows in the 50s and 60s. And up in the high country, Flagstaff, you'll be in the 50s through at least Friday. And then warming up big time for the weekend with highs in the 60s on Saturday and even warmer on Sunday. And we stay right around 60 through early next week with lows in the 20s and 30s. But looking dry as well, not just in Flagstaff, but here in the valley through next week too. Well, becoming a wildlife manager is no easy task, especially in our state where the terrain and wildlife can vary greatly. As we continue to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month today, we meet one woman who didn't let anything stand in her way, and now she is living out her dream. It was more than I could have hoped, to be honest. I didn't know this job existed when I was little. And that is why Yoseline Heink works hard to spread the word about what she does at the Arizona Game and Fish Department as a wildlife manager. Her love for this work started years ago. When I was little, I was like a little wild child. I loved to be outdoors and play with animals. So she set out to make this her career, even though she wasn't sure where to start. My family, we weren't very outdoorsy or wasn't a big hunting family, nothing like that. Um, so I didn't grow up in that environment. She graduated from the University of Arizona and landed her dream job nearly five years ago at Arizona Game and Fish. She helps relocate wildlife, studies biology, and enforces rules as a state officer. And when I connected with her, she told me it took a while to get family members on board. Even with my own mom, all she knew, all she heard was police officer. And she's like, no, 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 I don't want you doing that. That's dangerous. And I'm like, that's only part of the job, mom. <laughs> now, officials with Game and Fish tell me she is one of just 21 game wardens who are women and the only Latina. And she encounters many Spanish speaking residents who are unaware of what the department is here to do. I've taken a huge initiative with helping translate material that the Game and Fish puts out from English to Spanish, because there is a huge need for this education to the Hispanic community. And to me, I'm very passionate about that because it hits home. She wants people to know what resources are out there to enjoy our beautiful state safely and also show young people that anyone can follow their dreams. Yeah, so you can just really tell how passionate she is about the education aspect of her work. So if you would like to learn more about what Arizona Game and Fish does, you can click through their website. That's azgfd.com. She's an inspiration for sure. Well, from Thriller to Ghostbusters, who doesn't love a good Halloween song, right? Ahead at 625, how to enjoy some music of the fright. Plus, is America about to go on strike? Ahead for you at 638. From the heartland to Hollywood, employees are threatening to leave their jobs. Mail theft becoming a growing issue across the country, forcing many mailbox repairs and replacements. So at 645, a closer look at your rights when it comes to getting what's being delivered to you. Oh, this is exciting. A taste of Hollywood coming to Arizona. It's going to bring money too. filming is now underway in and around Tucson for a new dramatic series on HBO. This one is called Duster and it's going to be fun. It's set in the Southwest back in the 70s after uh, it follows the life actually of a gutsy getaway driver for a crime syndicate. So it's being directed by J.J. Abrams. So you know this thing is going to be big. The production expected to spend $53 million locally. No word yet on when it's going to be released.
Are you looking to get in the Halloween spirit? We have an event coming up tonight that's going to have you feeling spooky. It's on our bulletin board this morning. The Phoenix Zoo hosting Music of the Fright. It's a haunted evening of your favorite songs from Halloween movies like Ghostbusters, Nightmare Before Christmas, and Psycho, along with hits like Michael Jackson's Thriller. It's an outdoor candlelight concert. Tickets are 40 bucks. Seating is first come, first serve. The show starts at 9. 9 p.m. Enjoy a night of the sounds of Halloween. That is today's bulletin board. Phoenix Rising hitting the field early this Saturday as they head to Vegas here. And you can watch and cheer them on live at 2 p.m. on the CW61 Arizona. You can also stream it on the ABC 15 app on Roku, Fire TV, Apple TV, and Android TV. Hello! Hello! Such a cute. Like a boy band or something. They're freaking out. <laughs> you can't blame them, right? A sweet surprise. That's Phoenix Sun star Devin Booker, the NBA player donating a hundred thousand dollars to Girl Scouts here in Arizona. You could just feel how appreciative they were, right? Yes. That's where those screams are coming from. He had invited them to game two of the WNBA finals so they could all cheer on our Phoenix and Mercury. And they also gave him some cookies. They okay. Said, Thanks for the check. Yep. That's a Here's nice exchange, right? And this is one of those um, things that's going to continue for the next five years yeah. because of Depot. It's just awesome. Great. Up next at 6.30, it has been more than two years since the music went silent. Today, Arizona's biggest country music party is back. Mail theft is a growing problem, leaving more mailboxes in need of repair. I'm investigator Joe Ducey with your rights when it comes to delivery. And supporting the family of fallen deputy Juan Ruiz. Coming up, I'll explain how you can come out to this car wash here today in Goodyear to help. And the slow warm up continues today. We're calling for highs in the upper 70s and eventually the 80s and even 90s are back soon. So is unfortunately more wind. Details coming up in your most accurate forecast.